you're in the Northern Hemisphere like I am, Milky Way season is definitely upon us. It's time to get out there and start shooting beautiful Milky Way photos now that spring is finally here. Now, editing these photos can prove to be challenging for a lot of photographers. So whether you're doing blue hour blends with tracked images or you're just shooting single static shots and stacking them in post-processing, um, there's a lot of little techniques that are going to help you to improve your images. In this video, I wanna show you the most impactful thing that you can do that will literally take you a one or two minutes on each photo, and it's gonna be the best way to start out editing any photo. It's gonna be making adjustments to the contrast selectively in your image. I'm gonna show you how to get it done in today's video. Let's jump right in there. I'm gonna show you Photoshop first, then we'll show you Lightroom after that. And I'm here in Photoshop now. I've got my image here. This is a tracked Milky Way with a blue hour blend. Again, like I said, don't worry if you're not doing tracked um, and blended shots. Uh, it's not a worry because I'm going to show you guys just a regular static shot next. But first, I'll show you the tracked image. The process of what you're going to do is exactly the same. So whether you use Photoshop or Lightroom, no matter how you take your Milky Way photos, you're going to do this exactly the same. So I'm here in Photoshop. Um, what I first want to do is make a selection of the background. So I'll show you kind of the mistake that people make first of all, which is that they'll go in here um, and they'll do this in whatever software they want. And they want to add contrast because they want to make this Milky Way pop, so they will slide the contrast slider. But now you can see this absolutely crushes the foreground. Then they might try and bring up the brightness later of the foreground, and it's just going to not look good. Even if you make a selective adjustment to the foreground or to the shadows in the image, the foreground just isn't going to look very good when you do this. Um, and the reason is because I will show you here with just a luminosity mask. Don't worry if you don't understand how to use this but it's just simply not gonna look good. You're gonna have very mixed results with this. So instead of doing all that, I'll show you the better way to do it. What you wanna do is make a selection of the sky. So however you do that, go ahead and do it. I like to use the quick selection tool, but you could use a variety of selection tools or even the color range tool or anything like that. But if I use the quick selection, I can just do that. You know, I can touch up the little spots right in there. And that's good enough for the sake of this video. Now I'll go in, I'm going to grab a curves adjustment, always curves, one of my favorite ways to make adjustments. And let's actually go ahead and make this just a little bit bigger so we can see it. Now I want to create an S curve in the sky. So you can see, and a lot of times I like to drag up this black point as well, because I don't want like a super dark area in the sky. But when I drag this up, you can see I can kind of match the rest of the sky just like that. Just drag that down. Now I can really pop the highlights to pop the Milky Way. If you don't know how a curves adjustment work, I'll link a video here to show you how you can use a curves adjustment if you don't understand it. But you can see something like that is probably pretty good. Um, just that one adjustment has already brought in a lot of color, a lot of contrast to my Milky Way. Now I wanna do the opposite to the foreground. Now, once you've made the selection of the sky, you don't have to go back in and make a different selection of the foreground. It's actually pretty easy to just copy and paste this over. So hold command on Mac and click, that's control on PC. Go in and create another curves adjustment layer. And then while selected on the layer mask, you're gonna do command I on Mac or control I on PC. That's gonna invert the selection. So now you can see we've selected the foreground. Now I'll click back over here to get my curves adjustment. And what I want to do is create an opposite S curve. I want to remove contrast from the foreground. So I'm going to bring up the bottom and bring down the top. And I want to remove contrast because in theory, there shouldn't really be much contrast in the foreground because the light is flat and even there shouldn't be big shadows. Just like that. And then I can drag up this very far left side point that's gonna kind of help to flatten and remove even more contrast. Bring that up just like that. So you can see how we've, we removed the contrast. We don't have these deep, dark um, shadows, and we also don't have the bright spots anymore either. But now you can actually see what's going on in the foreground, and I think it still looks relatively realistic because it is flat, it's not super contrasty. So just those two adjustments um, are the best way to get started with any image. If I wasn't talking you through this, I could have done this in less than one minute. Um, and this is going to give me a great way to start my image. That's how you do it in Photoshop. Now let's go ahead and talk about Lightroom. Now Lightroom is more or less going to be the same thing. You can see this image is a 
single shot image that I stack together later. A lot of you guys might be editing your Milky Way photos this way. Uh, you lose a little bit of resolution and detail and you have a little bit more noise in the foreground, but other than that, it's not too bad. I'm gonna go in and grab my masking tool here. Um, and in Lightroom, you can just do a sky selection. Now it generally doesn't work quite as well. You can see there's some stuff on the edge. There's not a way to refine that or fix that as far as I'm aware. Um, so it just kind of is what it is, but we can still work with it. You'll scroll down to the curve, same thing. We will kick some contrast into there, slide that blacks point up if you want, just to flatten it out, bring that up. I think this one's a little underexposed, so I can go in and make adjustments just like that. Maybe I wanna cool it down a little bit, just like that. So really quick adjustment there. You can see that's really helped to kind of transform the sky immediately. Now, again, we wanna do the opposite thing to the foreground. So we'll go in, we'll click here. We're gonna click duplicate and invert mask. That's gonna invert the mask and create a new one. So now we're selecting the foreground, which is great. Now we can go in and do the same thing. Now I will say if you're having problems here because you know I'm not seeing a whole lot happening, you can also go in and just grab the contrast slider and subtract on the contrast slider. I have no problem with doing that. I'll bring that blacks point up and not too far because you can see your image gets this like matte look to it. And I'll create another point, drag it up, and maybe another point and drag it down. You can see how I'll show you the before and the after. I've really kind of smoothed this all out back here. Um, and I haven't really made the foreground much brighter, but I've just reduced the contrast. So now you can see more of the details. So before and after. Now there's lots of other edits you'd want to apply to your Milky Way photos after that. I'll link a video here for that if you're interested in that. Um, but this is kind of the best way to start your image. Do this on every image, whether you're in Lightroom, Photoshop, whether you're shooting stacked, tracked, anything like that. Best way to start your images. Hopefully that little adjustment will help you guys to edit your Milky Way photos a little bit better this year. I know once I started doing this, it just transformed the way I edited. It, it took out so many many hours of work that I was spending putting into the Milky Way. Um, and it just apps really simplified my workflow, which really helped me to produce a little bit better edits that I think look a little bit more realistic. Now again, I'll link those videos down below that have some other Milky Way tips, tricks, and everything in between, workflows, all that good stuff. But if you guys have any questions about this particular process, let me know down below in the comments. If you try it out and you like it or you don't like it or anything like that, let me know. I'd love to hear from you guys. But again, I want to thank you guys so much for checking out this week's video. Make sure to leave a like and a subscribe if you're serious about improving your photography this year. Otherwise, thank you guys so much. This is Austin James Jackson. We'll see you guys next time.